Let's rock again. Another week at Blues Academy. Uh, this time we're taking a look at uh, Jimmy Reed's New Leaf. Um, I really dig this song. I like the I like the message in the lyrics. Um, the original recording, from the point of view of the guitar, um, you know Jimmy's doing a fairly rudimentary thing, and I think possibly by this point in his career he was often taking a back seat on the guitar and, and letting um, guest guitarists come in and shred <laughs> over his stuff. So what I chose to do um, on our version of the track is I kind of approached it like um, Mike Bloomfield when he played with Dylan, when Dylan went electric. So it was kind of Highway 61 era, you know, and um, he would just kind of rip and wail all over the tracks and, and add a, a sort of injection of energy to the piece. So that's the vibe I was going for. Um, strictly speaking, it was not a very Jimmy Reed uh, approach. Uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit more as the lesson progresses. What I'd like to do here is just break down the, the basic rhythm part for the guitar and then maybe give you some tools to help you approach writing your own solo. Um, whether you choose to approach it like I did uh, and kind of just go ripping all over the track or if you want to do a more um, understated approach and use some double stops and some chord based runs. Um, it's really up to you how you choose to play on a tune, right? Um, so let's take a look at the basic rhythm track. It's a classic sort of a, a rocking rhythm part. So just going to do an A chord like so. So notice that I'm not doing this. Which is totally great and you might want to do that uh, later in the track when, uh, when you hear the drums in the rhythm section kind of kick up a little bit really dig in like that but most of the time you want to play an understated part underneath the vocal so you need to control the guitar like so I'm really only hitting three strings there the A string, D string and the G string Notice that I am doing down strums until the last little section there when I introduce the up strum to add a cross rhythm, like so. All right, and then you can just repeat that idea on the D chord. So one way to do that is just play a partial D here, like so. Okay, that's one way to do it, and then you can just stay around that area. So you do the same on the D chord. Back to the A. Up to the E. Okay, and for the turnaround there, you've got one bar on the A. So you're just going to walk up, kind of on beat three, landing up there on the five chord. One, two, three. Okay, pretty simple. Um, now, different approaches to playing the rhythm. So let's have a look at this, this riff here. The, the actual rhythm part is based around an A drone, and then we're going E. F sharp G, right? So let's take that idea up into the higher octave. So if you take an A triad here, there's those notes again E, F sharp, G. 
So what they are in relation to the A chord, there's your A root, there's your third, and the E is the fifth. And then the next notes, we've got the six and the flat seven. Right? So in terms of, you know, if you want to take a solo, these are all really good notes to think about using and to be aware of what they are, you know? So you've got root, third, flat third as well. Six and seven, flat seven. Okay. Now, in in terms of a rhythm guitar thing, you could take this idea and play it in the high in the upper octave, right? So instead of this, just play it here. So that's a cool variation, or you can use this this idea, this triad, to build your uh, your solo phrases, uh, all the notes I just described, and then when we move up to the D7 chord, the four chord, instead of playing down here like I showed you earlier, we could take this triad idea, slide it up here, and do the same upper octave kind of riff. Okay, and then you've got your E7 chord, so we can do this. Or you could take, again, the idea, just move it up to the E in the upper octave. lines. So this is all good stuff to use. You don't have to um, play wild guitar solos over Jimmy Reed music. Um, it's just the way that I chose to approach this tune. And I'm certainly not, I'm not going to break down um, everything I played on our backing track because um, I just put the track on and I improvised in, in the spirit of the tune. I, I have a vague idea of what I played but I certainly wouldn't be able to recreate it verbatim. Um, however, with that said, what I'd like to do is show you um, some of the, the phrases that I, I incorporated into my solo. So one phrase that really came into my mind as I was listening to this track was this... Um so something along those lines I use repeatedly throughout the song and certainly in my solo. And instead of playing it as single notes like I just did there, you can um, take it as double stops. Okay, so something to bear in mind here that sounds really good is this bend here, I can just show you the guitar more clearly. This bend here, we want to bend this G string up a whole tone, so from here to here. Like so. But this note underneath we just want to bend it half, okay? So practice taking those two notes and bending them like so. Okay, so that's a cool one to use. Use it in any configuration you like. <coughs> Excuse me. And again, just taking that triad, right? The A triad really cool thing is to break the chord up into double stops. That's two notes at a time. Okay, and slide into them from just below. Okay, and then we add the other double stop. So there's a whole bunch of ideas there. There's the door. So, lots of interruptions today, lots of interruptions. Let's carry on. So, talking about ideas uh, along the lines of double stops built around the A triad. If I just give you the clear picture of the hand there. So, there's your A triad. 
double stops, two strings at once, you know. Okay, and then sliding into each of those ideas from um, just a semitone below. Okay, and then as I showed you earlier, we've got these two here. We could potentially grab these two. So that gives us something like this. Just all places where you can do those, those types of double stops. Again, we've got the third, the four, and then up here. Classic Jimmy Reed style stuff. Okay, so that's all good juice. And then again, if we're soloing, you know, in A, right, A pentatonic or A major or whatever, you, you might be inclined to play in this area of the guitar. But let's let's move it up somewhere else. So what about if we go up here? We've got all the same notes, right? Oops, sorry. Okay, so there's the minor third, major third. That's equivocal to this. Okay. And then up here. All of that. So if we we're going to go major, you go like this. All right. If we think about the A arpeggio here. Just very slowly through the major arpeggio, starting from A with your pinky on the root. Then you're going to go to down to your ring finger, down to your index. There's the major triad. Onto the root, up to the five at the twelfth fret. Doesn't sound very bluesy until you add the minor third. building around that major triad, adding some chromatic tones, And if we're going to go minor pentatonic, then it's like this. A minor pentatonic, just running through very slowly. We've got A root here. Down to E. All of these notes are good. There's the root. Onto the minor third, major third. These are all potentially good notes. Up to the root again. Okay, and then stepping down the strings. Nine, twelve, ten, thirteen. So, once again, and then here on the top string, 10, 12, 13, back to the root, okay? And again here, we could, we've got this A root note, right? And we can bend the G string up to A there to get that same note. Sounds pretty cool. And then this is a lovely little move up here. So step in from A up to the minor third. 
give it a little bend, back to the root, or you could slide up to the root. Alright, so lots of juicy stuff there. Um, dig in, you know, play around with this, uh, see how you want to approach the song. Uh, I hope these ideas are useful to you and uh, look forward to jamming with you again next week. Cheers guys.